We have several more NHL prospects that have signed contracts I want to discuss here today. Plus, we also have some more offseason rumors involving the Carolina Hurricanes and the Vegas Golden Knights. Could the Golden Knights actually have a goaltender controversy on their hands, which could see Marc-Andre Fleury possibly traded this offseason? We'll discuss the possibility coming up next. Welcome back to another video here, Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, we have a variety of signings to talk about and a few trade rumors for the offseason. Let's kick things off with the signings. Now, one signing that seems to be closer to being official is the Ottawa Senators signing defenseman Artem Zub, who's a defenseman from the KHL that we've talked about before. Uh, it looks as though Ottawa kind of has been the front runner all along. There was a, another team apparently in the mix, but never really found out exactly who that was. But apparently, Darren Dreger's reporting from TSN that he, that he do have a one-year contract on the table, and he is expected to be signing it, uh, and that it should be officially announced sometime here in the next couple of days uh, as the uh, contract's in the KHL officially start to expire now that we're officially at the end of April. Now let's get into some other newer signings that were just announced here today. The Detroit Red Wings have signed a goaltending prospect, Victor Bradstrom, who's from Sweden. Uh, he's a big guy, six foot six, over 200 pounds. Uh, he's been playing over in Sweden the last couple of years, had some really good numbers, spent some time in the SHL. Apparently, he's already been loaned to play this year in Finland in Liga, uh, so he'll be remaining to play in Europe for at least one more season before making the jump to North America. Uh, because of Bradstrom's age, this is a two-year entry-level deal. He's 23 years old, and he was drafted back in 2018 in the sixth round so he certainly drafted a little bit later could be a little bit of a late bloomer but uh, certainly based on his performance over in Sweden recently given his size and how he might be able to jump in to Detroit's you know weak goalie depth system here and maybe take advantage of it they're a team that does not have a lot of great prospect goalies in their system so if he can continue developing and playing like he looks as been here uh, over the past little while he could turn out to be a very interesting prospect to keep your eye on for Detroit the New York Islanders have signed prospect defenseman Samuel Boduc, who's 19 years old. It was a 2019 draft selection and playing in the QMJHL. Had a pretty good uh, offensive output, putting up over 40 points last year, so he seems to be coming along nicely with his development. He's also got some pretty good size and strength, being at 6'4", 210 pounds. So he's already got the NHL size uh, already looked after here. He's putting up some good offensive numbers in the queue. So we'll see how things go for him. But certainly another very interesting prospect defenseman for the Islanders, who seem to have a fair bit of those in their system now. They do have a lot of D-men who could certainly, you know, really enhance their blue line in the years to come. And certainly something that could become trade bait because they've got more than enough defensemen, I think, in their system right now that are on the younger side of things. The Colorado Avalanche have also signed a prospect goaltender, Justice Anunen, who's a Finnish goaltender and was originally drafted in 2018 in the third round. It's already been confirmed as well that he will remain playing over in Finland in Liga for the next season as well before he makes the jump to North America. Uh, so we'll see here how this prospect goes, but another very interesting prospect goaltender out of Europe, signing an NHL entry-level contract. Like the other prospect goalie we talked about here today, uh, Noonan's got a great size, six foot four, 210 pounds. So another big European goaltender who seems to have a ton of potential, very interesting prospect here. So another interesting guy for the Avs for us to keep our eye on here over the next little while. The Edmonton Oilers have also signed another prospect defenseman, and this guy's also another big guy, Marcus Niemlinen, who's six foot six, 200 pounds, another big towering defenseman here. All these guys that are signing contracts today are very tall and at great size. More of a defensive defenseman drafted back in 2016 by the Oilers, so he'll sign his entry-level contract here with Edmonton's. So of course, another team like the Oilers who have a lot of interesting young uh, defensive prospects. Like I mentioned in another video here recently, the Oilers have had some young defensemen make some great strides recently. And they have other guys on their system like Bouchard and Broberg and others. So adding another guy like this who's more of a stay-at-home guy with a great size could be another very interesting guy to keep your eye on here for Edmonton over the next year or two. Now, as I mentioned as well, we also have some off-season trade rumors I want to take a quick look at here. Let's start with the Carolina Hurricanes. Now, uh, Sarah Sivian of The Athletic had an interesting article talking about some potential movement we, we might see on the Hurricanes blue line. She referenced the fact that Sammy Votnin, who was acquired at the trade deadline, is likely all but gone. He was mainly acquired as a rental player. Uh, clearly, there doesn't seem to be a lot of room for him. Moving forward, based on a salary cap perspective, as well as having a deep blue line already, they likely wouldn't have gone out and acquired Votnin if their blue line hadn't been battered with injuries, because uh, they certainly had more than the adequate guys 
there prior to guys like Dougie Hamilton getting injured, for example. Brett Pesci went down. Uh, so clearly they made another big acquisition, acquiring Brady Shea, who was not a rental. He had a longer-term deal. So with Brady Shea entering the mix, that's certainly all but signs a deal here for Votnin to leave town. And it might also spell the end of another defenseman in Carolina, possibly a guy like Joel Evanson. Of course, Evanson came over from the St. Louis Blues when they traded Justin Falk. Uh, and certainly their blue line has even evolved and changed a fair bit more since he was originally required. And he might be kind of running out of a spot here in Carolina. He might get boxed out. I mean, you've already got guys playing up higher in the lineup. You've got Jacob Slavin being their top defenseman. You got Dougie Hamilton. You get Brett Pesci. Then you throw in Brady Shea and Jake Gardner with longer term contracts. And then you've got other younger players like Hayden Fleury. They might bring back Trevor Van Riemsdyk if the price is right. That's a possibility. Not a guarantee, though. Uh, so and they also have a guy like Jake Bean in the minors who's been really earning the opportunity, in my opinion, to get NHL time and has kind of been boxed out of an NHL job. So we very do likely see the Hurricanes trade a defenseman sometime when the offseason officially kicks in. It's been a narrative that we've discussed for quite some time. Carolina's had a large number of NHL quality defensemen they've been long rumored to make a trade to you know probably add some more forward depth they've yet to do that and I do think the offseason now uh, the time is going to be right to do that especially with everything that's going on in the NHL uh, you know the likelihood of a flat salary cap and all those things are going to have to rejig their uh, their strategy here and it's time for at least one defenseman to move on obviously like I said Votnin doesn't return he goes through free agency possibly TVR as well, but I wouldn't be shocked to see a guy like Evanson be moved out and the other guys kind of be their solid six or seven guys to get more time for Fleury and Bean in their lineup. So I guess the question would be, what kind of return could they get for a guy like Joel Evanson? Maybe it's more of a guy like Jake Gardner. I mean, Gardner didn't really have a terrific season in Carolina. Uh, we didn't see the offense out of him like we've seen in the past. Maybe they feel that he's not the right fit and maybe they try to pedal him off to maybe bring back another forward. So I guess... We'll see. I mean, obviously, Gardner was a longtime Maple Leaf. Uh, clearly, the Leafs are going to be needing some help on the blue line, and the contract that he got was pretty reasonable. Obviously, there's no direct rumors linking him back to Toronto, just a suggestion because those two teams were linked for a long time. We know the Hurricanes really had their eye on several of the uh, Maple Leaf forwards. So, you know, maybe that's something they revisit. Hard to say, but either way, there certainly will be shakeup on the Canes blue line before the 2020-2021 season gets underway. Now, as I mentioned as well, I want to talk about a potential goaltending controversy in Vegas. I mean, clearly Marc-Andre Fleury's been their guy since the, the franchise kicked off. He was their top pick in the expansion draft, the face of the franchise, and really was a large part of the reason they had so much success in their inaugural season, uh, going all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals. But at this point, you know, Fleury earned himself an extension after that great season. Uh, but he's getting up there in years. They made an acquisition that was very interesting at the deadline, getting Robin Leonard out of Chicago. And even though Robin Leonard was, you know, sort of could have been a rental player, he's an expiring contract. But the fact that they have his rights for the time being, I can't help but wonder uh, if they might want to resign him and have him there longer term. But there's just no way they can make that work without a significant contract going out of Vegas. Now, there's been numerous articles that I've seen talking about this narrative that we might see, and could it be the end of the line of Flurry in Vegas, and could they possibly try to sign Leonard and move Flurry out as a way to make it happen? I really don't see any of their other bigger time contracts that they can move to make it happen. Being what goes out, it would only make sense to have Flurry be the guy that goes if they were to go down that kind of road. I mean, Robin Leonard's going to be likely be looking for a six or seven million dollar deal, and it just doesn't make sense to have 13, 14 million dollars tied up within your goaltending, uh, where all those other forward contracts are already on the books. And certainly, you know, you need a good mix of of uh, different positions on your team. So obviously, to have that much money tied up in goaltending wouldn't be a wise move. But if you look at Mark Andre Fleury, he's 35 years old. He's soon to be 36. He's got two more years left at $7 million cap hit over the next two years, which really isn't all that bad. He does have a form of a no trade, but it's not a complete no trade. He has a, a 10 team no trade list. So there's 21 teams that he could be traded to without even being questioned on it. And he has 10 teams that would require him waiving if uh, if they're on his list. So clearly they have a lot of wiggle room there. Uh, the camp hit's not crazy. He comes with a large pedigree, quite a resume under his belt here from all his uh, longtime success in the NHL. So it could be a possibility now. The other thing to think about is that Marc-Andre Fleury is now 
in three seasons in Vegas. Obviously, we had you know two full seasons, and we were in year three when the season was paused and interrupted. But if you look at his stats here, and I'll give you a quick glimpse on the screen, just to remind you, is he's still been a solid, effective goaltender. Every year in Vegas, the numbers have gotten a little bit worse. They've been creeping back up. He came in like many other guys with a chip on his shoulder and played lights out and got them really deep into the playoffs and was really their MVP, in my opinion, in that playoff run going to the finals. But... At the end of the day here, the play has not kept up to that level. And I say not that he hasn't been good, but he hasn't been great like he was in that first year. And maybe a guy like Robin Leonard, who's seven years, almost eight years younger than him, very well could take over for a similar contract and could position the Vegas Golden Knights to be a stronger team for a much longer period of time. Uh, they don't really have a guaranteed solid like backup solution in place, which is why Leonard was brought in in the first place. If Leonard walks through free agency, they ride with Fleury. They're not going to be in bad shape short term. He still has a couple years left. I'm sure he's got some good hockey left in him. But there's no clear-cut goaltender in the system who can take over from him in a year or two's time. So it would be a shame to see them get uh, have a guy like Leonard kind of get away uh, when they can get him signed and give him what he's looking for to keep him around longer term. So, I mean, to me, it does make a lot of sense. There's no guarantee that any of this happens. But clearly, many people kind of raise an eyebrow when Leonard was acquired at the deadline. And Vera could be a narrative we see play out when the offseason finally kicks in. So let me know what your thoughts are on this scenario. Do you see a situation where Fleury could be traded, Leonard could be signed, take over the goaltending for the foreseeable future, and really get them a similar type goalie, maybe even better, who can be the same kind of contract, but be much younger and set them up for a long, longer time success here in the desert. Let me know what your thoughts are on that situation, and we can discuss further. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content, and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it as well. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time. Thank you.